this video shows you how to paint your bedroom, living room, bathroom and kitchen, you know, in different contrasting colours. Wear the appropriate face mask to prevent or avoid unwanted exposure to paint vapour. And also, wear your safety glasses to prevent paint droplets from splattering over your eyes, okay, especially when you're painting your ceiling. Click on the link in the description for an exhaustive list of your prep and preparation or masking tools and your painting tools. This was covered extensively in the previous video. You know, in this video, we'll be, we will be primarily focusing on your painting tools, okay? And how to paint your rooms. So, click on the link in the description for the masking process. So here, I will be running you through a brief recap of the materials or tools that you will be needing for painting. To paint your rooms, you will be needing paint brushes, a ladder, nitrile electrical gloves, cleaning solvents, sandpaper, wall and wood fillers and painter's tape, a paint roller tray, paint roller and sleeve, a paint bucket, scuttle and kettle, the tray liner and the bucket liner, or you can have your cage frame roller and your corner roller pad your two to four feet quick release extension pole which can help you reach you know far ceilings and wider angles and of course your actual paint so here i will be utilizing the eggshell the matte and the obl obliterating emulsion okay to paint certain areas in the rooms and also make sure that prior to painting all the preparation or prep or masking has been done in all the painting areas like using the carpet protector to protect your carpet using the dust cloth sheet to prevent paint from seeping through onto your carpet you know running the frock tape around the corners um, of your skating board you know your wall and your ceiling and also the recess of your windows pretty much using the painter's tape or frock tape to protect or cover areas that you do not want the paint um, overspray or the brush stroke of the paint to, to latch onto, okay? Also make sure that your radiator, furniture and door are covered up, okay? You can also spread your general masking paper or brown paper around the corners of your room, you know, to catch all the paint that would be spilling down, you know, just before this getting board and your carpet protector. OK, you can use, you know, your, your brown paper or you could use your dust cloth sheet, whichever um, comes in handy. And so I have got frock tape on the ceiling, on the skirting, on the door frame and the recess of the window. And that's because I want to keep the painting on the ceiling, on the skirting and on the recess of the um, window as well as the door. And also very early on in the process, do not forget to cover or mask your sockets and your switches okay you do not want paint spills um, getting into your sockets or switches okay as um, anything that's liquid could, could cause a short circuit in electricity and so the next step of the process is the setup and the actual painting you know we've got our cage frame roller which is the metal bit here and our corner roller pad you know which is the white bit over there you know the extension pull screw fits into the cage frame roller although your local paint center or decorating center should mix your paint you can use a paint mixer to stir the paint until it fully recombines or mixes properly without proper mixing the paint will not apply to the surface in the way that you want okay so if your paint isn't properly mixed stir the paint with your mixture until it becomes a homogeneous mixture and so with the aid of a non-flex scraper i will get the lead off on visual inspection the paint looks well mixed already from the decorating center but for demonstration purposes i will be showing you how to mix your paint okay so insert the mixer into the chalk of your drill vary the speed of the drill to one press on the trigger and 
the mix that spindle starts to spin. Continue to spin until the mixture is uniform and devoid of any bubbles. You cannot fully eradicate bubbles because of the action of the spindle or the mixer spinning. But, you know, to a great degree, um, you can reduce the amount of bubbles that you've got in your paint. OK, so just keep spinning till your mixture becomes homogeneous and, um, you know, devoid of most of the bubbles that you've got, you know, to an nth degree. So here I am actually trying to properly mix an eggshell paint. OK. And once I'm satisfied on visual inspection that, you know, the paint has been properly mixed, I will take out the mixer from the chalk of the drill and clean the mixer as quickly as possible because this is an eggshell paint. And once it dries, you know, on the nooks and crannies, it becomes quite difficult to get off because this is an eggshell paint. So just make sure you dip it in cleaning solvent or you brush, you know, your mixer as quickly as possible as opposed to your matte paint, which can come off relatively easily. And now we can actually start to paint once we've sorted out our masking, our prepping or preparation, as well as, you know, the mixing of the paint. So first I will be targeting the awkward angles, you know, around the skirting, you know, the recess of the window, at the corners in the ceiling, and around the door frame, you know, around switches, around sockets, you know, those um, angles or those corners, you know, where, you know, the corner roller cannot relatively um, hit, you know, um, I will use my paintbrush to get in there. OK, and so first I am, you know, running through with the paintbrush around the corners of the skirting. Just imagine, you know, the paintbrush coming all the way down to the skirting, you know, the the circular part of the nap or the um, corner rule that wouldn't you know really get into this um, sharp 90 degree angles okay and so this is where the angle cut paintbrush comes in handy so here i am using the two inch slanted angled brush to paint underneath the window stool and as you can see at the right angled complementary angles um, I have got you know the painters frock tape there and I've also got a polythene film sheet you know that's been used to cover the window stool okay and that's because I do not want paint to get on on the um, window stool again I have used frock tape on the inside of the windows recess and that's because I want to minimize the impact of the eggshell yellow paint you know for, you know that's been painted on the outside of the windows recess I want to minimize the impact you know on the inside of the recess and that's because if I get you know the yellow the yellow eggshell paint spilling over or latching onto the inside of the windows recess and it cures um, it can be quite difficult um, to get it off because you know you need to sandpaper it and even if you decide to paint over it, say for example, with a different eggshell paint or with a matte paint, you know, you will still see visible lines. And that's because, you know, as, as the name implies eggshell, it can be very shelly in, in its um, appearance. If it's painted over, you will definitely see the line. So just be careful about how you let, you know, paint spill from one end to the other. But it's quite, you know, very good quality paint, looks absolutely brilliant um, and you can easily um, clean over so it's got its pros and it's got its cons and you know I love you know eggshells okay the next step of the process would be to extend the paint application you know behind the radiator so dislodge the radiator from its four supporting brackets they are pretty much sat on the hook so just dislodge the radiator okay and make sure you support it at the bottom okay with you know a support that you know reaches the um, clearance um, from you know the bottom of the radiator to your floor if you haven't got an adequate support you could use your paint tin you know as long as you know it meets the height clearance and whilst painting you can use your other hand to support your radiator that is if your radiator you know, install or it's um, fixed onto, you know, the bracket, the, the two brackets that you see here in this um, fashion. It is important that you adequately support your radiator as you do not want to break, you know, them wires that were assembled on the radiator, you know, that emanates, you know, from the wall. And so pretty much once you're done, you know, painting behind the radiator, 
you know, when stall, your radiator back onto them four hooks. You've got two at the top and two at the bottom, okay? The next step of the process would be to paint around corner sockets and corner switches. Make sure that the paint is not overly drippy as that could easily seep through the masking around the socket. I prefer to use the frog or painter's tape as opposed to your general masking tape as the frog tape has got, you know, a painter's block technology that prevents paint from seeping in through the masking. It's pretty much up to you what you decide to use. But as you can see, you know, I've replicated the painting at awkward angles at virtually every nook and cranny, you know, around the room. You know, I'm visually inspecting it to make sure that I've taken care of all the awkward angles. And the green tape that you can see, you know, running through all the corners of the room is a frog or painter's tape if you're by any chance wondering what it is. And once I'm pretty confident on visual inspection that all the corners have been taken care of, the next step of the process would be to paint the wall areas outside of the um, painted corners. It's always best to have multiple brushes if you decide to paint contrasting colours in a room. That kind of like saves you time on cleaning out the brushes if you're using different colours, okay? And so the next step of the process would be to assemble the cage frame roller, the corner roller pad, and insert the two to four feet extension pole. So I've got the corner roller pad in my hand. I will insert here the cage frame roller. And once fully inserted, I will insert or screw in the extension pole, which is about two to four feet. You know, whilst pressing on them levers, you can extend the pole to, to reach, you know, far out um, work paint areas, okay? Just by pressing on them levers here. So the next step of the process would be to get our roller tray into position. You know, we're gonna pretty much deep the corner roller pad, you know, with the cage frame into the roller tray. Deep the roller pad as many times as we want in the roller tray and begin to paint our walls, okay? Cover up the kettle and the brush with the bin back so that air doesn't dry out the kettle and the brush rapidly. So here, we're gonna pour some paint from the tin into the roller tray, okay? And scoop out, you know, the leftover paints, you know, on the side of the tin with our brush, you know? Deep our corner roller pad into the roller tray so that we can impress or latch on paint onto the pad. If it is a brand new pad, it's always best to you know soak your pad in soapy water and make sure that you drain out the water, make sure that the soapy water is quite damp on the pad, okay? Before you impress or latch paint onto the pad, that way you could get more pad spread um, over the wall with your paint. So make sure that when you soak the pad in soapy water, make sure that it's not overly wet. Make sure that it's really damp, you know, very light damp. You know, you could use a dry towel to get out you know, most of the moisture from the pad. Okay, otherwise you'd get very drippy paint spread over your wall. You know, with time and practice, you will, you will get, you know, the, the right balance. And so in the actual painting, you can use V or W strokes on the wall, or you can use straight horizontal or vertical strokes to paint um, your wall, you know, bespoke to requirements. Whichever you feel more comfortable with or more inclined to use. An overly wet pad could leave runny lines um, over your wall. Okay, when painting, you could see, you know, the drips or the lines, you know, running down on your wall. Okay, so it's important to strike that very good balance. It's important to make sure that your pad is not very wet, you know, when you're um, applying paint onto the wall with your roller. If you're not able to strike a good balance using soapy water first on your pad before painting, you know, you could use your pad directly into the paint to minimize the runs. So once we're done painting, you know, the next step would be to visually inspect all awkward angles that have been painted. And, you know, also the, the areas that we've painted outside of the awkward angles, you know, look for any spotting, look for any um, unpainted areas and, you know, paint over them. So typically after the first coat, I have waited for about four to six hours before applying, you know, the second coat. So one base coat and two overcoats, okay? You know, spread out at intervals, okay? You know, when you run the first coat, you know, it necessarily doesn't look brilliant, but you know, subsequently, when you overcoat and um, the base coat, um, you know, it comes out brilliantly, okay? 
You can also wait at least um, three hours to recoat your paint or primer if it is water-based. And waiting for a day or 24 hours is best for oil-based paint and primer. The next step of the process would be to take off the painters of frock tape at a 45 degree angle, 90 degrees from the left extension of your fingers and 45 degrees from the fold of the tape. Taking off your frock tape or painter's tape erratically could leave a gross tech finish, which could leave you blooming with indignation. Or having a go at your suppliers that quality time and cost have been compromised. If you present a gross tech finish to your customers, their comments may be filled with resentment or pejoratives. So it is absolutely crucial that you get it right the first time. But not to worry, you know, if your paint peels off when taking off the tape, all it, all it means is that you just need to wait for, you know, the paint to dry, you know, tape over it, then paint the defective side that has got, you know, the paint peeling off, you know, um, as a result of taking off the um, tape incorrectly. Sometimes if you take off the tape correctly, you know, the paint still peels off. It might be that the adhesive on the tape is very strong or that, you know, you just had one coat on your wall, you know, after it was being primed. So the paint um, was very weak. It could also mean that water bubbles were present in your tape when it was previously applied. OK, if your paint peels, you can also get a scraper, sandpaper, you know, um, a clean cloth, microfiber cloth, you know, with warm water to clean out the area and repaint over it. And you can also patch holes in the wall as well. You know, to see how to do this, click on the link in the description to see how to repair walls and wood. And so I like differentiating colors at the corner of the wall and you can see at the window recess, you know, I've differentiated um, colors, which is the yellow and the white. OK. So this room will be painted yellow, gray and white. And the reason why I've included white, um, which is a new truck color, is to bring out the brilliance. If I just paint it yellow and gray all through, it would hide the brilliance, you know, of the yellow and gray color. Just a personal opinion. But when I introduce a neutral color like white, it brings out, you know, the brilliance, you know, it also brings out, you know, the confines um, of the color. It makes the color stand out, you know, and more defined. For me, you can't go wrong introducing a touch of white in your painting as it makes painting more aesthetically pleasing. You know, just a personal opinion. You don't have to do, do it. OK, as different strokes for different folks. And so the next step of the process would be to paint the focal wall in diamond eggshell grey. As you can see, I have allowed the yellow wall to dry or to cure, taped over it. And so I will be painting the focal wall diamond eggshell grey. And so this is where your tray liner comes in handy. If you've used a yellow colour already, you know, clean out your tray. But if you've used the liner, just dispose of the liner and pour your paint into a new liner. Here, I have cleaned out the roller tray and I will be infusing some um, grey eggshell paint into the tray. As you begin, you know, to brush stroke the corners, you know, between, you know, the um, yellow wall and the white wall, you will get some splattering of grey paint, you know, that comes onto, you know, your, your yellow wall. Get a damp microfiber cloth and clean as quickly as possible, okay, if you've got any splattering. If you haven't got a microfiber cloth, improvise by using a damp rag, okay. And as you can see here, this is what I mean by splattering. You know, you've got paint, great paint that's latched onto the yellow paint. Um, you don't want, you know, those visible spots, you know, on your yellow wall. Finish off, you know, the socket corners, if you've got any sockets on your feature or accent or focal wall. The next step would be to inspect the defined or contrasting lines between the yellow and the grey wall. Look out for any paint crossover. Mask around the defective lines. Ensure that you place the frock tape on either of them dry walls, you know, depending on where you're redressing, okay? In this instance, I want to correct the non-conforming lines on the grey wall, so I've placed the frock tape on the yellow wall. Paint over the gaps whilst ensuring a straight line, and also paint over the remaining 
um, wall area outside of them awkward angles as done before. Take off the frog or painter's tape. Look out for non-conforming street lines. Repeat and reproduce the process by redressing with frog tape in tiny little segments and paint over the defective lines till they conform with respect to straightness. The next step would be to visually inspect, you know, your painting, ensure that it is aesthetically pleasing and also ensure that your lines are pristine, you know, that you're not getting any patch, no spots, you know, and um, give it that professional touch by paying attention to minute details. The devil is in the detail when you're painting with multiple colours. If it was just a homogeneous colour, you wouldn't be bothered as much with fine lines at every turn, but with, you know, contrasting colours, you have to pay attention. As this is the price you pay for bespoke customer and variant requirements, but, you know, it is always worth it in the end. Don't forget to click on the link in the description for prepping or masking and taking off masking for paint mixing and painting other variant colours. Don't forget to subscribe and share as we move on to the next stage of painting the room in Hicks Blue and White eggshell. Here you can see that prior to painting the room in Hicks Blue and White, I haven't thrown away the painting materials. I've just covered them up in bin bags that, you know, keeps your paint roller pads fresh and, you know, not dried up. Makes it easier to reuse your tools or to insert new um, accessories onto your say for example your cage frame roller or your scuttle it makes it easier to to clean out your painting brush as you do not want to be cleaning dry painting brushes or scuttles or kettles if your roller pads or brushes are completely dried out you know because you haven't covered them you might you might as well just discard them because nine out of ten, nine out of ten times they're non-reusable so here we've got a focal an accent or a feature wall on the far left that we will be painting in Hicks Blue and the opposite end to as well will be painted in Hicks Blue in conjunction with a wall that runs onto the right of the door. Your local decorating centre have got their own eggshell branded paints but today I will be using you know paints with improved quality and you know the paint in question here is your intelligent green okay doesn't matter if you use your local paints from your decorating centre, you know, or the intelligent green, they will both come out brilliantly. But, you know, I just kind of think the intelligent green has got, you know, a more improved um, professional touch to it. So here we will be repeating and reproducing the process, but we'll be skipping or skimming through a lot of the process that was already covered in the first quadrant of the video. So um, if you want to see that, click on the link in the description. It should take you to them videos where we covered how to prep and how to paint extensively. So we're just going to be showing you, you know, different stages in this video and what, you know, the outcome was. OK, and if the process is reproducible. So here you can see that all the masking's been done, the dots been covered, the windows been covered, the doors and the floor have been covered. We have also used masking of the painter's tape to protect areas where we don't want any paint spill or brush stroke over, whilst also ensuring straight lines. If you've run your frock tape, say for example in this instance where there is a gap between the ceiling and the wall, Rerun your frock tape so that, you know, there isn't any gap between the ceiling and the wall. Or, instead of taking off the entire tape, you could just, you know, cut a tiny piece or segment of tape and latch it onto the um, defective parts where you've got gaps between the ceiling and the wall, okay? As this will save you a lot of time. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, okay? So I've cut, you know, a segment of tape and, you know, latched it onto um, a part, you know, where I felt that, you know, there was a gap. So you can see that I've doubled up on the tape there, but that's just to cover up, you know, the gaps that, you know, that's um, defective on, you know, the straight line. And that's because it's absolutely important that when you're painting contrasting lines, you know, that, um, you know, you've got straight cuts and, you know, that your um, lines appear pristine. You can always correct them after you've taken off the tape, but correct as much as you can prior to painting so that you have less work to do when you're done painting okay especially if you want that professional 
touch or feel to it. And as you can see, I'm visually inspecting the carpet covering to make sure that we do not have any openings between the skirting and the carpet protector or the um, dust cloth sheet. If you do find any openings, make sure that you tape over them or you cover up with um, your dust cloth sheet, okay? And once I'm satisfied that the skirting and the carpet have been adequately covered, and as well as, you know, the... Um, roofing or the ceiling has been covered with frock tape because i want to keep the paint on the ceiling you know once i'm satisfied that you know the frock tape you know is pristine and straight lined you know and i'll be getting you know at least to a decent degree um a straight cut i can proceed to paint um over so one part of the wall where we've got the window would be in little green eggshell white and the rest of the wall which encompasses our focal wall and our back wall will be in little green eggshell hicks blue okay so pretty much we're painting in hicks blue and um, eggshell and in white and um, eggshell okay the brand pretty much is intelligent green do not confuse intelligent green with the color it's just the brand okay and you can see for this 2.5 litre, the typical coverage is 14 square metre per litre. And in the caveat, it recommends that we coat after every four hours. And so the next step of the process would be to open up the paint cans or tins, you know, get some paint into the scuttle and then subsequently begin to paint the walls, okay? In the first quadrant of the video, we pretty much covered extensively, you know, how to mask or prep or prepare your room and how to paint your room in diamond uh, yellow eggshell and white eggshell and grey eggshell as well. And so here, we're just typically replicating or repeating and reproducing the process, you know, for painting, you know, the awkward angles, which is, which are, you know, your paint corners. And that's because we cannot really easily get the um, paint roller pad in them corners at right angles, okay? And that's what we use our paintbrush to stroke um, through all the right angles. You can see that, um, that I've painted across you know all them corners you can decide to paint your wall first before doing them corners or vice versa by painting them corners then afterwards painting your wall is, is pretty much up to you but i find find that you know doing it this way is a lot more efficient okay so after painting them corners and painting the outer areas external to the angles we coat it over about three times every four to six hours and then subsequently leave it to air dry do not let the paint overly dry and that's because when you come to take off your mask skin you know you might have paint peeling off the wall so ensure that it's not overly dried ensure that it's still somewhat wet you know remove the masking tape at a 45 degree angle and then subsequently redress imperfections in the straight line of the masking like I've done here. You can see that I've got, you know, segments of tapes, you know, on the ceiling, around the doors, in them corners. And this is what I mean here. You can see that there is a gap there. So I've run tape over, you know, the straight line again. And, you know, I'll be painting over, you know, the gaps. So with contrasting um wall paints you know you always need to check out for pristine lines and you know where you've got gaps you know place your frock tape over there okay again redress and paint you know the gaps okay as you want a straight line okay so you always have to visually inspect this paramount is utmost important that you inspect your lines make sure they're pristine and aesthetically pleasing it is always worth it in the end, you know, when they come out beautifully. And now that you get the hang of it, keep checking, keep redressing, keep remasking and keep painting over till your lines are perfect, okay? This is not the calm before the storm. You know, it's just behind the scenes, you know, what's been done to ensure that your lines are perfect. And so once you've sorted your street lines, you can take off the um, tape. Click on the link in the description for how to prep, mask, paint and take off your painter's tape. And once you're done with the redressing and the straight line perfection, that's your painting job done, okay?
just take off you know the frock tape once you're done and that's your you know your painting done in the next video quadrant we will be painting um, a leaving room and making the focal wall yellow or matte yellow you can click on the link in the description to see this or you know scroll to the next subsequent video and you know with regards to removing you know the prep work um, anywhere you've got masking always take off you know the tape it could be your general masking tape or your frock tape make sure it's taken off at you know a 45 degree angle and not erratically take it off gently and where you've got peeling redress and you know paint over that don't don't be dismayed, repeat and reproduce the process and in time you should have, you know, a perfect straight line. Doesn't matter if you've got, you know, masking over the door frame, over your skirt in, you know, just, you know, take off the tape in the same orientation and apply the same principle at 45 degrees. And you should get the prep work off relatively easily. The next thing would be to show you different shots, you know, of the uh, of the painting and you can see how aesthetically pleasing, you know, it looks. All of that hard work has culminated into this masterpiece. So it, it is painstaking, but in the end, it, it is always worth it. OK, and you can see the painting with the lights on. OK, and with the lights off. So so it is it is beautiful. Um, you know, I'm happy with it. I haven't got, you know, crooked lines. And so that's fine with me. OK. And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. It helps the channel grow. Okay? This video shows you how to paint your living room in diamond matte brilliant white and diamond matte yellow or sun flare on the walls and on the ceiling obliterating white emulsion the paint cans or tins come in 2.5 liters and the mixing ratio is 1 to 10 1 part water and 10 part paint okay and also ensure that prior to paint application that your wall is really dry and clean okay here you've got the diamond white brilliant matte and over here you've got the obliterating um, emulsion white which will be used on the roof okay or ceiling and it comes in 2.5 liters as well okay after visually inspecting your prep work masking get some yellow and white paint into the tray liners for painting we will be replicating the process as previously discussed in other quadrant segments of the video and in the link in the description you know prior to painting make sure that you visually inspect all of the prep work make sure that you know the corners have been prepped with masking repeat the masking process for the areas where you'd want to keep the paint you know mask around your sockets and your switches mask around you know your door frame if you decide to keep you know the the paint on your door frame and you know that applies to your skirt and too as well i want to keep the paint on the skirt and so i will be taping around or masking the skirt in i initially wanted to keep the painting you know on the ceiling so i did mask the ceiling but subsequently changed my mind and that's because when i was painting over little you know spots you know or peeled up paint you know on the ceiling with the actual um, paint um, that was used initially you know there was spotting and patches and it didn't match and that does happen sometimes especially when you painted your ceiling ages ago and you're trying to latch on you know the same paint you know onto the paintwork sometimes it does match and sometimes it doesn't maybe due to the disparity or the length of time um, that has you know passed from when you initially painted it and even when I retrieved the same paint from the decorating centers um, system, you know, it still didn't match. And, you know, I still had, you know, white patches over white patches, which was, which was quite alarming. It didn't matter if I left it out to dry for about two weeks, the paint still didn't match. And so the only option I had was to um, paint the whole ceiling with obliterating emulsion white. Okay. You know, the same original paint, but just, 
I decided to um, just paint everything, okay? Suffice to say, if you're trying to get some new paint onto um, a previous white wall, um, you need to be very specific with how you select um, your paint because um, there are different shades of white as with any other color. And so if you're trying to match the paint, make sure that, you know, your decorating center gets you the same brand and selects, you know, the appropriate uh, mixture from their system. OK, as you can see, these are both white colors, one obliterating emulsion that's, you know, on the ceiling and the wall is your matte brilliant white. OK, the different shades, but same white color. And here we have painted over the focal accent or feature wall to matte yellow. And as you can see here, we've applied masking, you know, on the um, obliterating emulsion and the um, brilliant white um, walls, as we do not want the diamond matte yellow or sun flare to spill over into them areas. OK, and this is what... Um, you should do when you're painting contrasting defined colors and as you can see I chose my focal or feature wall to be right on the corners which is the sun flare yellow and as you can see the focal wall paint ends on the insides of corners okay you don't have to do it this way but in my opinion I find this more aesthetically pleasing and once you take off the masking off the focal wall you can begin to redress with masking tape. Redress all the areas where you've got defects or disparities in the straight lines orientation. It is a painstaking process, you know, it may take you some time, but it is always worth it in the end. So do not be discouraged when you're plodding or plugging along, you know, as you redress and try to smoothen out, retouch, repaint, and, you know, you know, um, work out you know how straight your lines should be if you do not protect um the ceiling and you know the surrounding walls um so for example if you're using eggshell if you want to paint over the eggshell much more later after it cures or air dries um it could leave you um, um lines okay as it's a lot thicker and scalier but you know the eggshell is a brilliant finish you know and the matte sun flare a brilliant color in this case, we've just used, you know, the matte um, sun flare or yellow color, and you can see it's come out brilliantly. And all we have to do is to redress, you know, defective non-straight lines um, after painting. And this is what I mean when I say you must get the exact paint match when you're touching up, you know, certain areas on your ceiling. As you can see here, this is the exact same paint, but, you know, it's still showing up, you know, patch marks. It should, you know, blend in. It's been left for more than two weeks and it's not blending in. And, you know, earlier in the video, I gave you a host of reasons why this could happen. It sometimes it doesn't mean that you've got the wrong paint. It could just be, you know, all the variables, okay, that we mentioned earlier. And so you can see that I have done some masking around the perimeter or corners of all the walls in the living room, okay? And so you can see that, you know, whilst I'm painting the obliterating emulsion on the ceiling, and it's not latching or spilling onto the brilliant white on the side wall, and the yellow sensitive tape on the side wall helps prevent that. And that's because, you know, as opposed to just touching up, you know, certain white areas that, you know, had scratches on them, I will be painting all of the ceiling with the oblit obliterating emulsion. And that's because the exact paint didn't match. OK, for some of the reasons in the in the aforementioned. So I have run a 3M sensitive tape you know, around the perimeter of the side walls um, that have um, brilliant white. That's because, you know, the 3M sensitive tape has got, you know, a paint block technology, but the adhesive on it isn't too rigid or strong. So when I come to take it off, you know, I wouldn't get as much peeling as I would have had if, I, if I'd used the painters and frog tape, um, whose adhesive is, is very strong, okay? So it's always best to think about what you're doing and take into account when you're working, you know, through your budget, you know, just work out or you know test your paint with samples to make sure that um, your paint matches and here you can see that the sun flare matte yellow color on the focal wall 
to obliterate an emulsion on the ceiling and the brilliant white on the wall matches, you know, it's come out brilliantly and matches with the interior furniture. You can always choose a theme style to match your personality and here are some snapshots at the end, you know, it looks ab absolutely brill. And up until the next clip in the next video quadrant or in the description, that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye. This video shows you how to paint your bathroom in the Intelligent XL Olive Green, XL White and the Smalt Blue. And if we're not happy with one of the eggshell colors, we can repaint it, you know, by prepping the wall with an 80 grit or 180 grit sandpaper and then repaint it with an eggshell scree gray paint. Here I have got one 1.5 and 2 inch brush set. You can use them if you're working on a budget, but I prefer, you know, the bristle and them synthetic ones. Click on the link in the description for an exhaustive list of your masking and painting tools. And here we've got the olive paint open. You know, we don't need to do any mixing. It's been properly mixed. Also check to see if the eggshell smalt and white have been properly mixed. Mask and prep your work area. Check the link in the description for how to mask and prep your work area. The next step of the process would be to visually inspect your work area for any um, perforations, any cuts, you know, in your prepping, as well as visually inspecting areas that you do not want the paint to spill or latch onto, okay? And if you're painting contrasting colors as opposed to a homogeneous color, mask their respective sections appropriately. And then subsequently paint your wall in olive green and smalt blue. And something interesting has happened here. Sometimes when you're picking out your paint color, um, no matter how you envision it, you know, sometimes you can only see the true reality um, when you paint it, okay? No matter how many samples you pick out, okay? And, you know, just, you know, personal preference, I prefer a cool and duller um, color. Okay, so I will be changing the smalt blue to a scree grey eggshell colour. And, you know, if you look at the roof, I do like the contrasting colour between the olive green, the smalt blue and the eggshell white, okay? But not a huge fan of how the olive green and the smalt blue transitioned in terms of, you know, how they contrasted against each other. If I had a white neutral colour between the olive green and the smalt blue, it would have worked for me. So I will sandpaper the smalt blue wall with the 80 grit and 180 grit sandpaper and then paint the wall over with scree grey. And then it comes out even more fab or brilliantly, okay? Even without a white neutral colour between the olive green and the scree grey. And that's because I have toned down the lost that glow of the smalt blue, you know, having to change it with um, a slightly duller color, you know, but perfect, which is the scree gray. Everyone has different preferences. So, you know, feel free to play with colors bespoke to your requirement. Okay. To see how to prep, to mask, to sandpaper, to fix your patched wall, to seal around your bathroom, or apply sealant to drill your bathroom wall to install a soap dispenser and also to paint your wall click on the link in the description or refer to other quadrants in the video's complete guide if you found the information useful don't forget to subscribe and share and hopefully catch up with you in the next chapter of the video this video shows you how to paint your bathroom in eggshell white. Little Green is the brand and the Intelligent Eggshell is the finish. And so the Little Green brand should not be confused with the colour. The colour is eggshell white, okay? And why have I chosen to paint the bathroom in eggshell white? And that's because, you know, the initial colour that was here was, you know, the matte finish. And, you know, the eggshell provides more resistance to mould or steam in the bathroom. 
you can easily clean off you know dirt marks of the um, eggshell it also reflects more light than the matte finish to produce you know a lower luster you know it also basically pulls out more of the paint color than a flat sheen which gives the room a softer glow and so the overarching reason why I've chosen an eggshell finish is that it's, it's a lot more easier to maintain as opposed to, you know, having the matte finish here. And so the first step of the process would be to visually inspect, you know, all of the prep work for any cuts, any perforations in, you know, your films, okay? So that paint doesn't seep through the cuts that you've got, you know, in your, say for example, your carpet protector or your polythene film, okay? And so first, in this scenario, I have covered, you know, the skirt in as I want to keep, you know, the paint on the skirt in and also, you know, the roof or the ceiling, you know, I have, you know, run, you know, the frock tape around the perimeter of the ceiling because I want to keep, you know, the um, roof painting. You can use a bristle or synth synthetic um, brush, you know, to paint your wall. It doesn't really matter. Both will do the job. And also make sure that the areas where you do, you do not want paint to latch onto or to spill onto is um, protected, okay? And so the next step of the process would be to get some eggshell um, white paint into your tray roller. And then subsequently or painstakingly start to paint around the perimeter of your bathroom walls, okay? Paint all four corners. Repeat and reproduce the painting process on all painting areas of the bathroom wall. So suffice to say, paint all of your bathroom walls, you know, in eggshell white, excluding the roof in the first instance. And here you can see that most of the spills um, falls onto the brown paper or the polythene film as opposed to the vinyl carpet. And, you know, you can also see here that, you know, the um, paint falls onto the brown paper here as well. In this instance, the matte skin was done on the ceiling to protect the ceiling paint as I wanted to keep the ceiling paint. But as with any painting job, over time you, you can change your mind, okay? It's not set in stone. And so I've decided to um, paint the ceiling from matte white. I have decided to change it to eggshell white. And the implication of this is that the mask skin that was done initially to protect, you know, the ceiling paint will have to move or will have to change, as you can see here. So it's gone, you know, on the um, wall as opposed to being on the ceiling. And that means I, I can paint my ceiling, okay, with eggshell, okay, which is what's been done here. After painting around the corners of the lighting and the ceiling, the next step would be to paint other areas, you know, within the mask skin or other areas outside of the confines, you know, of the painted corners. The next step of the process would be to take off the mask skin and, you know, the protective films around the lighting. If all of the paint work was eggshell or were painting homogeneously, I really didn't need to um, tape around, you know, the ceiling roof. But I did because I didn't want brush strokes, you know, or dripping paint, you know, sipping onto the already painted wall. And as you can see, it looks absolutely brilliant. You know, for tips on how to prep your bathroom and also how to paint, click on the link in the description. If you found the information in the video useful, don't forget to subscribe and share. It helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you in the final quadrant of the video. This video shows you how to paint your kitchen in intelligent eggshell white, obliterating emulsion white and smalt blue eggshell. I have chosen the intelligent eggshells because they're a lot more easier to maintain as opposed to the matte ones, okay? And you know, in the kitchen, there's a lot of traction, a lot of smoke and steam, you know, and all of that residue takes its toll on the wall eventually. So with the eggshell, you're able to um, clean, clean off, you know, the um, contaminants or residue deposits more readily, easily. And for example, you've got oil at the back of the cooker, you know, it's a lot more easier to clean off if you've got, you know, like eggshell. So the first step of the process would be to mask or prep your work kitchen area and then subsequently clean off dirt or stains using your sugar soap 
the last thing that you'd want to do is to um, paint a very greasy or oily surface. So make sure that you degrease it and wipe down subsequently with a microfiber cloth. Degreasing it helps significantly with paint adhesion to the wall. And so the next step of the process would be to actually paint your wall in intelligent white eggshell and your ceiling in the obliterating white emulsion paint. Click on the link in the description for tips on how to prep or mask your room prior to painting and also how to paint your room as well, okay? It also highlights an exhaustive list of items that you should be getting prior to prepping and painting your rooms, okay? And once you're done with painting the focal, accent or feature wall, you know, take off all of the masking, take off all of the coverings, you know, um, in the um, work area. To reveal the fine lines, you know, from the painstaking um, paint work that's been done, redress the masking and touch up areas where the straight lines are defective. You know, if you had, you know, a fresh plaster wall, you know, you should be priming your wall first if it, if it is porous. But just take up the sense that we didn't do that, you know, because we're just, you know, pretty much painting over, you know, um, the initial paint that was there. Ideally, our best practice would be to paint your walls prior to installing your cabinets or white goods. If you have them already installed, you may need to stretch your hands paintbrush and roller a little bit further to reach them awkward angles and areas. Suffice to say, one base coat and two other coats and this is what it reveals, you know, it looks aesthetically pleasing, looks ab absolutely brill. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share, helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.